Well, hi everyone and welcome to Community Journal. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And um, we're almost to Thanksgiving. Yes, we are. And the seasons have certainly changed. They certainly <laughs> have. I recorded the coldest temperature so far this uh, season. Uh, I forget, was it Wednesday early morning? It was 21 degrees. Did that break um, a record for here? Because I know I'm Boston sure. broke a record. I'm not sure that it broke a record, but... Uh, Whatever, 21 is cold. <laughs> no yes, matter, it no is. matter how you look at it, it's cold. It is sweat, sweater weather. <laughs> yes, and it's, I guess we got a little bit of snow. We were out of town, but we got a little bit of snow while we were away, and every bit of that snow is still on the ground, so it hasn't gone above freezing yet. No, but luckily it's not on the pavement, it's just on grass. And that's true. Yes. That's, uh, we're lucky about that. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, well, we've got an interesting show for you today. And we're going to start with a library update with Emily Milan. So uh, let's take a look at that right now. Hello, Harwich. This is Emily Milan, Assistant Director of Brooks Free Library, coming to you with a quick little update on some happenings at the library. First of all, we're really excited to announce that as of today, which we're filming on Tuesday, November the 12th, um, as of today, CLAMS has implemented an automatic renewal system. So for items that you have out that are due back, um, three days before renewal, or three days before the due date, they'll check to see if the item is eligible for renewal, and if it is, they will automatically renew the item to give you a little bit more time to get it back. So a couple to know about this service. Like I said, it starts today and only physical items are eligible for this automatic renewal. So items that you have checked out like ebooks or e audiobooks will not automatically be renewed. This is for physical items such as books, CDs, DVDs, materials that have been in and checked out from the library. Um, they will automatically renew up to three times. That's the same renewal limit that you have if you come in and ask for renewals through the library. The maximum number of renewals is three, so that max will be in place as well. Um, materials can't be renewed if someone else is waiting for the item, so if someone else has a hold on that item, or if the item isn't eligible for new renewals like express books, um, those are not eligible for renewal. Or if your, item, if your account has been blocked for some reason, such as excess fines over $25. Um, in all other cases, uh, borrowers who have an email address on file will get a courtesy notice three days prior to that due date and it will let you know whether or not the items were eligible to be renewed and what the new due date is. The new due date will be calculated from the original due date. So for example, if the item was due on the first of the month and it was eligible for renewal, it'll be due two weeks later in the case of a book. So it would be due back on um, the 14th then. So we hope you enjoy this new service. I think it'll really kind of come in handy for people, um, especially during the winter time. We know that you get tied up with other things. The weather is bad. You're not able to come out. So this automatic renewal system will help people um, who are unable to get in before that due date. So we're excited that that starts today. Um, we have a program coming up later this week that we're really excited about. We've invited um, Phil Burt, who is a local meteorologist. You may be familiar with him if you ever check your weather on capecodweather.net, um, which I have found personally that he seems to really understand the intricacies of Cape weather, and he is often more accurate than some of the other options out there, in my experience. Um, but we invited him to come and talk about tornadoes. So. We all learned a lot after the tornado about what type of damage is done and all of the things that happen in the aftermath of a tornado, but he'll be coming to do an educational presentation this Thursday evening, November the 14th at 6 o'clock, and he'll be talking about the meteorological aspects of tornadoes, how they form, um, how they're categorized, and all of those sorts of things. So really looking forward. I um, hope that you can come and join us for that to learn a little bit more about tornadoes. In that same vein, we have a follow-up program the following Thursday, which is the 21st, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And this is a community conversation on extreme weather. So what we found after the tornado is a lot of people were coming into the library and we were all talking about our experience after the tornado, 
the damage that we had sustained on our own property, the damage that we had seen around town. And it was really very helpful to have those conversations with each other. So in this vein of community conversations, which are becoming more popular in libraries around the country, we're inviting you to come in and sit down and have a conversation with us and with your neighbors and with other community members about what it was like going through that experience and what we might do differently um, in preparing for extreme weather in the future. So that event's going to take place on Thursday the 21st at 2 o'clock. Um, registration is required. We will be offering some snacks and coffee and that sort of thing, so we want an idea of how many people we're going to have so we can be prepared for that. You can register by going to our website, brooksfreelibrary.org, and clicking on the event link on our calendar or by calling the library at 508-430-7562. And again, um, that event is taking place on Thursday the 21st at 2 o'clock. So we hope to see you there, and we hope to um, see you drop in over the next few days in the library. If you have any questions, Seeing you soon. And we thank Emily for her update. Uh, always uh, uh, really great to see what's going on at the library. Yes, and it's nice that they are getting people prepared for possibly extreme weather. Yes, very true. And, um, you know, this, this again is the season. We really don't know what we're going to get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, just the way it is. Uh, however, it's also the, what people are calling the holiday season. And given that, uh, you've got some holiday things to talk about. I do. Nice segue, Jack. <laughs> I do. Of course, with the holidays come fairs and sales and so forth, and I have some of each. The Howard United Methodist Church is holding their holiday fair on Saturday, November 23rd, from 9 in the morning to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. The church is at 1 Church Street in East Harwich. There will be a luncheon from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., and that can be either eat in or take out, whichever you prefer. There will also be coffee and pastries, and as far as the fair itself is concerned, there will be attic treasures, jewelry, knitted items, cutlery, handmade Christmas ornaments, plants, baked goods, and that includes fresh baked apple pies. Oh my goodness. Yes, I know that's your downfall. <laughs> so anyway, mark your calendar if you're interested, Saturday, November 23rd from 9 to 2 p.m. Very good. Yes. You know, the Cape Cod Chamber Orchestra has been uh, putting on some wonderful concerts, and uh, this one is no exception. This is called A Mostly English Holiday, and uh, directed by Ma uh, Matthew Sinto. This is a benefit concert uh, for the Alzheimer's <coughs> Family Support Center. Uh, so it's really a, a great opportunity to help a very important organization. This is going to take place on Sunday, September 15th at 3 p.m. Um, and then it says uh, the pre-concert talk, uh, which would be very interesting, I'm sure, is going to be at the Pilgrim Church uh, at Route uh, 533, Route 28 in Harwichport, the, the big white church in the middle of Harwichport. And they're going to be playing music of Vaughn Williams, Alga Vivaldi, and Grace Williams. Tickets are $30 in advance, $35 and children and students are free, you can call 508-348-9202 for more information. And they also have a great website. Uh, it's capecodchamberorchestra.org. Uh, so a mostly English uh, December 15th with the pre-concert talk at 2.15. The concert begins at 3 p.m. Wow, they're really wonderful to do a fundraiser like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, such an important Alzheimer's. cause. Yeah, 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 no, that's really great. And, uh, you know, the, we're hearing more and more about this orchestra, which is... No, yeah, yes. Very that's good. That's great. Yeah, why not? Shall I? Sure. All right. <laughs> well, as you all probably know, if you uh, watch the show on a regular basis, both Jack and I feel that the Family Pantry as an organization is near and dear to our hearts. He volunteers for the pantry itself, and I volunteer at Second Glance. It's time to deck the halls for the holidays. Please go to Second Glance on this coming Saturday, November 16th. The shop will feature all things holiday. There will be holiday clothing, ornaments, lights, holiday home decor, holiday books, and holiday entertaining items. Please visit for a wonderful holiday selection at great prices 
and please know that every sale at the shop is a direct donation to the Family Pantry of Cape Cod, and it helps to feed families. And of course, with the winter weather coming in, uh, and it's coming close, <laughs> closer and closer, um, you know, there are seasonal workers that will need help during the holiday season and during the winter months. So uh, if you at all can help out by going to Second Glance and maybe finding a, a bobble or two for yourself or for a gift, uh, please do so and you'll be helping out a, a family in need. Thank you. So it's again Saturday, November 16th, Second Glance Thrift Boutique, 265 Route 28 in West Harwich. Very good. And speaking of the family pantry, uh, Dinah sat down with Christine Menard. Uh, she is the director there and uh, they're going to bring us up to date. So let's take a look at that right now. Hello, we're here with Chris Menard of the Cape Cod Family Pantry, Family Pantry of Cape Cod. She's the executive director, of course, and she is here to talk about the three T's. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Turkeys, toys, toys and, trees. and trees. Yes. yes. That works It's well. a good way for people to remember yes. all the things that the uh, pantry is doing, responsible for, and which they can help with. Yes. Right? Busy, busy time of the year at the pantry. It is. The it elves is. Are, are exceedingly busy right now. Between okay. food and the holidays, right. we are, yeah. And you've got a lot of elves. We do. So yeah. I understand. 650 elves. Amazing. That help. It grows every time. It does. Every time I hear. Thankfully, yeah. it does. Yes. We need every one of them. So <clears throat> Excellent. It's good. Okay, so let's start with turkeys. Mm. That's on a lot of people's minds right now because tea, Thanksgiving, is coming up as yes, well. It is. Okay. Yep. So, so this year, um, we will be providing 600 turkeys to the community. So these are turkeys that go out to a registered clients at the pantry. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, these are families that are counting on us to get through the holidays. So uh, we actually closed the registration. So we have 600 families signed up. Um, but now we're in need of turkeys. So mm. if anybody is out there that wants to donate a turkey, right. We are happy to have them. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're still looking for about another 200 plus turkeys mm -hmm. to get us through the season. So. Okay, so there's still quite a need for them. Yeah, and we were really lucky this year. We had four different groups come in mm. and kind of do a bulk donation of, you know, oh. up to 200 turkeys. Wow. So it really has helped us a lot. Um, but we're trying this year to get all the turkeys from the community mm. so that we don't mm. have to buy them for the Greater Boston Food Bank because yeah. they can then use those funds that they would normally use for turkeys on other different foods that would be helpful. So right. we're, okay. we're in full turkey mode right now. <laughs> okay. and we the need, turkey trot is on. The turkey trot is and on. So people can uh, donate turkeys uh, up until when? Uh, they can basically get them, our turkey day is on November 24th, so they would have to be okay. in by the 21st um, because okay. we'll pack that weekend and get everything ready. So okay. if we could get them in in the next couple of weeks, it would be really great. And we have the room, so if you have the turkey, wow. we can take it. That's terrific. Yeah. Okay. It's nice. All right. And uh, they can be either frozen or fresh. Right. And if they are fresh, you will probably freeze them if there's if it's not a lot of time. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. So fresh or frozen is good. And we usually ask for like a 15 to 20 pound because mm. most of the time you're mm. having, you know, three, four, five people over for dinner or more. Right. So we like to give them a big enough turkey that they can feed their family and hopefully a couple of their friends as well. Yeah. So excellent. Yeah. It's fun. Well, they it'll get be a good effort and I'm sure I'm sure people will be interested in helping out again, of yes. course, as and, always. And they can drop them right off at the pantry. So yes. if you go to the back right. door, there's a big door that says donations. The, the back door where one drops off other all, things as all, well. Yes. Okay. Um, and you can just drop your turkey off. Somebody will take it from you as you walk in the back door. Okay. Yeah. So there's turkeys. All right. On that's turkeys. turkeys. Okay. Are moving. moving right on to toys. Yeah. And the story about the toys is. So we serve, we plan, starting in August, we start to plan to serve uh, a thousand children mm. of our clients. So mm. our clients register for Toy Day, mm -hmm. um, and then ch we then start plotting and planning and, and getting ready for the, the, the actual day. Well, we're, mm. we will distribute toys and hats and mittens and mm. pajamas and mm. games and puzzles mm -hmm. to a thousand children. Um, so as you can imagine, it takes a lot of effort to get all of this done. Yes. Um, and so 
Um, the owls are in full force right now, so we are in the process of starting to collect toys. Mm -hmm. um, throughout Harwich, you'll see boxes out okay. um, anywhere from Coco Fit to the Harwich Chamber to, mm -hmm. you know, there's 15 different locations. You can go to our website to see where okay. you can drop off other than the pantry. Okay. Of course, you can drop off toys at any point at the pantry. Okay. And are there particular age groups that you recommend uh, yes. the toys for? So and we always have a harder time with the older kids. So mm -hmm. everybody will, lots of folks will donate for the little guys. Mm -hmm. But you know, the 11, the tweens, the 11 to 12 mm -hmm. year olds, mm -hmm. the 13 to 14 year olds, that's where we could really use the help. Okay. Um, especially with the 13 we actually give them a gift card, a $50 gift card. So if anybody mm -hmm. wanted to donate um, a gift card, and I basically say in increments of 10, you know, so because okay. um, then we can combine cards. Uh -huh. um, and, and think of a gift card that maybe it would be from the mall in Hyannis or maybe mm -hmm. Amazon, um, something that something they Something that would have a broad broad appeal, appeal yes. right okay so lots of kids <laughs> and then the event is actually on December 15th mm -hmm. um, and where is that held the, that will be at the pantry uh -huh. we do it in the morning um, mm -hmm. we basically will serve all the parents come mm -hmm. for the day because they are Santa uh -huh. um, so Santa comes to pick up the toys for the children mm -hmm. and then because the toys are new and unwrapped and unwrapped yes I was going to clarify that right always, so, then, so that you can see what they are right so they get a full bag parents take them with them and then they okay. have them for the actual holiday and this okay. year Christmas is going to come fast because yes. Thanksgiving is I so know. late. Yes, yes. So we are hoping to get all of our toy donations in by December 6th and 7th, okay. um, that weekend. Okay. Because, um, like I said, our toy day is on December 15th, which is mm -hmm. the following weekend. So that gives us one right. week right. to build <laughs> 1,000 bags for wow. children. Yes. And so that will yeah. take a lot all of All that sorting. And yeah, a lot of L's yeah. will be <coughs> yes. L's will be humming on the week of the sixth <laughs> through the. Okay, and again, uh, there will be boxes throughout town. There are already boxes throughout town that people can see and and put things in, but they can also bring things directly to the pantry. Yeah, and and the other place that's really nice to drop off if you haven't been is our Second Glance Thrift Shop, which is right on. Oh, you can drop off there. Yeah, okay. There's bags there. There, so. Excellent. And then, of course, you can go shop at the yes. Second Glance mm -hmm. and get some of your holiday goodies. Yes, a um, twofer. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So it's um, it's a nice event. It's a it's actually a wonderful event. Mm -hmm. um, we have mm -hmm. such a good day. I mean, can you yeah. imagine giving toys out to a thousand children? Yeah. It's a <laughs> it's a nice day. Are they do they come in in waves? Or they um, it's, come all at it's, once. It, they well, they'll come. We start about eight thirty in the morning, and and it'll go till about noon. Mm -hmm. um, and they but will, people can come whenever they want. Yeah, they don't so there's sign no appointments. Okay. No, but they have to have their their toy ticket, yes. which okay. proves that they're registered. And then of course, okay. when they register, that's how we know how old your child is and what yes. gender your child right. is. So then we can build the bags accordingly. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll get through a thousand kids in a relatively short time. Wow. Th it's, a, it's a machine. We've been doing yeah, this for a while. Yeah, but really exciting process and yeah. so exciting for the kids yeah. too. Yeah, so well anybody parents, wants to donate yeah. toys, we'd love to have them. Okay. Just remember, right. um, um, new, unwrapped, and if you can think mm -hmm. about maybe the older kids, that would be really, yeah, really nice. Yeah. And gift cards are good for the older kids yeah, as well. Yeah, right. exactly. We would love right. that okay. if that's possible. All right, yes. good. So then on to trees, trees. the yes. festival of trees. So um, Harwich has their Christmas stroll yes. on the week of the weekend of Friday, uh, December 6th and 7th that weekend. And mm -hmm. part of the Christmas stroll mm -hmm. is uh, they are sponsoring this year the Festival of Trees. Mm -hmm. uh, White's Florist did this for a couple years and mm -hmm. now this year the actual Sydney Williams at the Harwich Chamber has taken over the project. And what people do is they will um, buy a tabletop Christmas tree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then artists and individuals and companies will then decorate the tree. Mm -hmm. And many of the folks like we have um, uh, a woman, her name is Mary Brophy, who donate, her, donates our tree for us that I we see. put in. Okay. Um, 
And we put, this year, we have $240 in gift cards that will be on the tree. So mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you decorate the tree, there's lots of times there's really some mm -hmm. really cool stuff. Like last year, there was a tree that was all about the Bruins. And it had uh -huh. tickets, right. and it had right. transportation. So there can be theme trees. Theme trees yes. with a lot of goodies on it. Yeah. And then what they do is on the seventh, so you would, if you wanted to do that, you would buy a tree, you decorate the tree, mm -hmm. and then you drop it off at the Harwich Chamber. At the Chamber of Commerce, okay. Uh, the week going into the event. So you want to okay. pretty much have it there by December 2nd, December 3rd. Okay. And then Cindy and her team will have half of the trees displayed at the Harwich Chamber. In their office there. In their, in their yeah, in the conference room and outside. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the other half of the trees will be displayed at the 400 East, across from Stop and Shop. Okay. In their side dining room. Okay. So then everybody can see the trees. Okay. And then on December 7th, at 400 East, mm -hmm. that's when the auction and the raffle will actually occur. Okay. So you want to be. And if you are wanting to bid on a tree that happens to be at the Chamber of Commerce, and you're at the 400 East, they will. They will all. Everything the trees gets moved move, over to 400 yes. East before the final auction. Right. So okay. on that Saturday, okay. the seventh <coughs> at six o'clock. Okay. You would want to show up at 400 East, and that's where you get to bid. Is it a silent auction? Or, um, or it's a, a combination. Okay. So they have okay. part of them are raffled and then part of them are auctioned. Okay, um, I see. But, it's but the auction is a written uh, bid or is it a live bid? You know, it depends. I'm not sure what Cindy's planning this year. Oh, okay. So it could okay. be, um, um, could we'll be a combination. To, yeah, if there's a question. Some live action. Right. Some live auction action. Yeah. Okay, all right, great. And if you have questions on that, you can call <laughs> Cindy at the chamber mm -hmm. um, and she'll she'll answer your questions. And then... Obviously, all of the proceeds mm -hmm. that are derived from the event, they mm -hmm. will go to the family pantry. And that event starts at 6 o'clock at 400 East. Okay. And there's going to be an op uh, a bar will be available, obviously, and mm -hmm. then um, you'll be able to buy, you know, hors d'oeuvres and whatever. Uh -huh. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a party while you're yeah. bidding on the trees. So, well, nice event. It but, does sound. It yeah. sounds really great. This is the third year they have done this. Mm -hmm. um, and last year they raised over five thousand dollars. Wow! Which is um, equates a, to about twenty thousand meals. So it's a really nice event. It's always good to have that sense of how many people you're really able to serve yeah, with these things. Yeah. Yes. And okay. there's some very talented people. The trees last oh, yes. year were spectacular. Yeah, I'm sure. So, okay. Yeah. So look for the family pantry tree. Yeah. Mary Brophy's doing her magic this year. For so sure. That will be fun to see. Yeah. Okay. So busy at the pantry. <laughs> very yes. busy. Very busy at the pantry and all around town. Yeah. So this is great. Thank you so much for coming in and talking Thanks. about all these things. Thank you very much for having all. us. You're welcome. Okay. This is Diana Lane from Harwich Channel 18. Thank you so much. And we thank uh, Christine and Dinah for sitting down. And I don't know how Christine has the time. She is so I busy. I know, especially now with the yeah. turkey day and toy day. Yeah, and this is the yes. uh, season for them and we just want to remind you uh, that the, the family pantry uh, uh, their their shop is now on winter hours and those are 10 to 4 so 10 to 4 now for second glance and um, you know that's a slight shift uh, uh, during the summer season yes and and that is what the hours will be for the sale on Saturday as well 10 to 4 that's right very okay. good what do you have Eileen okay well I've got a holiday lunch coming up the Friends Annual Seniors Holiday Lunch is going to be held on December 3rd at 11.30 in the morning. We ask at Hidden Cove Cafe at the Cape Cod Regional Technical High School, 351 Pleasant Lake Ave in Harwich. The cost is only $12. You can bring it in cash or make the check payable in advance to F as in Frank, H as in Harvest, C as in Council, O, 100 Oak Street, Harwich, Mass, 026 Four, five. And the lunch includes a plated appetizer of butternut squash soup. Sounds wonderful. Mm. Uh, the buffet will include penne, penne pasta, marinara, and meatballs, roasted rosemary potatoes, steamed or baked codfish, and carving station for roast top round of beef. The dessert also will be plated, and it will be served apple cobbler with whipped cream. If you are intending to go, you do need to RSVP by November 25th, that's next Monday, <clears throat> or you can 
508-432-5050 and let them know if you need transportation. So again, RSVP by November 25th by calling 508-432-5050 and let them know if you need transportation. That's wow. December 3rd at 11.30 a.m. That sounds good. Yeah, it does yeah. sound good. Yeah. Um, the Kiwanis, <laughs> Kiwanis International is sponsoring an after Thanksgiving indoor sale. There are 50 tables available. Um, ask about our changes to help vendors. I guess there are changes. It's an ongoing thing. Uh, but there'll be antiques, collectibles, crafts, art, holiday decor, quality yard sale items as well. Uh, this is going to take place on Saturday, November 30th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., right here at the community center, and the admission is free. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask Mike Smith at his website, which is mikesmith6699 at gmail.com, or you can call 508-221-0977. That's the Kiwanis Annual After Thanksgiving Indoor Sale. And something else coming up at the Harwich Community Center <coughs> is the annual Garden Club of Harwich Holiday Boutique. There'll be handmade fresh evergreen wreaths, holiday sweets, holiday centerpieces and decorations, nautical <coughs> gifts, and handcrafted ornaments. It will be held on Saturday, December 7th from 9 to 12, as I said, right here at the Harwich Community Center. And by... Uh, frequenting their boutique and, and buying something to decorate your own home, you'll be helping to keep Harwich beautiful because they use the funds that they make to um, buy materials uh, to decorate our town That's right. for the holidays and for the summer. So you can also make a tax-deductible -dedu donation to the Garden Club of Harwich by mailing it to P.O. Box 301, Harwichport, Mass, 02646. Very good. Yes. And here's an activity that might interest pre-high school <coughs> students in the towns of Brewster, Chatham, East Ham, Harwich, Orleans, and Welford. ...number 7th uh, at the Eldridge Public Library in Chatham. That's at 564 Main Street uh, in Chatham uh, on the uh, 7th of December. There's no entry fee. Registration for this is 10.15 to 10.30, and the first round begins at 10.30. Now, there are sections for this, and there are actual prizes uh, given away. So this is quite a, a competitive chess tournament. I see that, My yeah. Goodness. Section wow. 1, uh, this is for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, $500 first place, and a $300 second place. Oh, my goodness. Pretty good. Section 2 is for third, fourth, and fifth graders. And $500 first place and a $300 second place. And then section three is for kindergarten, first and second grade. <laughs> I think that's great that I they're getting too. kindergarten kids <laughs> playing chess. That's incredible. Um, $200 first place and a $100 second place. Students only compete in their grade sections. Additional prizes donated by chessedu.org will be available. So this is a big deal. It is. Yeah. Wow, that's well, nice. That's, that's it, a great you know, game. It's really great to see yes. kids, you know, to get kids involved uh -huh. in chess. For more information, you can contact tournament director Mark Donlan at info at chessedu.org. Or you can call Mark Russell at 508-430-8400. That's the Mark Hayden Feynman Memorial Chess Tournament on Saturday, December 7th, at the Eldridge Public Library. Wow, that's really great yeah, to get it kids. Is. Yeah, So, we're uh, now going to go to uh, our next piece. Uh, I think we uh, ran this once before, but we thought it was uh, important enough we'd run it again. This is the Community Preservation Committee, Dinah sat down with Joe McPherson. Um, McParland, excuse me. I always say McPherson. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but Joe McParland. And uh, uh, let's take a look. If you haven't seen it, it is important. So let's take a look. Hello. We're here today with a member of the Community Preservation Commission. And uh, this is Joe McParland, who has come to talk with us about what the commission does and how it's financed and who it finances 
and general information that should be of interest to anyone here in Harwich. So thank you for coming thank in, you. Joe. Thank it's very you. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what you understand to be the role of the Community Preservation Commission? I will try. So okay. uh, I'm a brand new member. Yes. And um, uh, the, the Community Preservation Committee its mission, uh, as I understand it, is to, to preserve and improve the community through projects, improve its character, uh, keep the uh, update of, of pres uh, preservation of some of the um, historic buildings, and um, talk a little bit about what they've done so far. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed mm -hmm. at all the projects they've done mm -hmm. um, and, and what they have coming up. So. That's great. Uh, how, how do you get your money? How does the commission get its money? So um, we get three, on your tax bill in mm -hmm. town, uh, it's a second line, um, CPC, and it's a 3% levy every year on the taxes of, of, every, of everyone that owns a property. Mm -hmm. And we get that money there. So it's important for people to know that, actually, because that's what CPC means on that tax bill. Yes. Some people may not realize it, but yeah. this is what it goes. Yeah, it's Great to probably know. one yeah. of the smallest numbers are there, but it's it's a big number for us. It collects a lot of money to do some of the projects we do. Yes, yes. So do you want to talk a little bit about some of the past projects, some of the current things sure. that are being funded? Sure. And um, I know you're in a process now of considering new, yeah. new projects and new applications. Right. So that's that's interesting As too. As you know, right. So um, some of the well, some of the, one of the major projects are are things that they have created over the years is um, um, they, we've, we've acquired 122 acres of space land over our, t our time. So that's a lot of, 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 of acreage. Mm -hmm. And um, they're parcels that hopefully someday they'll be built on for low to moderate income and senior housing, mm -hmm. um, which is all one bucket. So um, some of the things, and you've probably seen these around town, mm -hmm. I haven't watched, I've watched the ends of them, and I haven't had time to see them from the beginning, but there have been projects over a long period of time. The Brooks Park Library, the Chase Library, um, mm -hmm. the bike trails, mm -hmm. uh, White House Field continues to be updated. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the biggest things and the biggest love of mine that I do a lot of mm -hmm. on the senior side, but I'm very passionate about housing. and. <clears throat> We've, we've taken a big role in creating the Housing Trust. And the Housing Trust hmm. is uh, run by Chris Clark and, and, and uh, four other members mm -hmm. uh, on the trust. Uh, it was a bit, they came in front of us last night. It was a bit uh, bumpy at the beginning. Hmm. Uh, Donnie Howell was there and he was saying how it took a little while to get us up and running, but now they are mm. up and running. Yes. And uh, we gave them the first 500,000 to get started mm -hmm. and they have um, have a consultant and of that some of that money they have a consultant helping them get the projects and pick and choose the parcels mm -hmm. and there's a bit of process to that because it is a municipality you just don't go and use the 500,000 as a trust and buy a piece right. of land you gotta right. go to town you gotta go to select with it's like yes. say it's okay and, there's many people to talk to yes yep. yes and uh, so that trust is they were in front of us again yes, last night for another 500000 and mm. talk, we're talking about that to see how that's mm -hmm. going to work. Okay. So, um, so that's a wonderful thing for the town. We yeah. certainly need it. Yeah, yep. it really is. Okay. And I know the facelift on the Brooks Library was quite dramatic. It was. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful work. So yeah. that's, that, it speaks for itself, really, the yeah. importance of these funds. Yeah. So right now, you're having a, a public comment and... Um, yeah, so we have public um, hearings and 15, um, you know, applications, applications. Mm -hmm. and um, that we have uh, right now, the, the money seems to change by the pennies every day, but approximately mm -hmm. we have $3 million to mm -hmm. give out to these 15 projects. Mm -hmm. And my math shows us about 600,000 shy. I see. So uh, yeah. somebody's not going to get So decisions paid. need to be made. But, you know, it's yeah. funny, though, uh, when you find um, you have... The first uh, people up were the uh, parks, and mm -hmm. so the 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 new um, at the elementary school. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that all over all that wreck, 
in um, the playground. The playground. So the playground. Yes, the castle them, and the clouds. Castle the and the clouds. Yes. Mm -hmm. You got you had kids there. You mm. had them all in the back of the booklet. They all wrote little things. Oh, oh, at the meeting. No, no. They handed us this book, and there was fifty different letters oh, from these sweet. kids. And then, yeah. um, parents came, and they were up first. But it took, oh, I don't. I got almost an hour to get through mm. all the one, people that wanted to talk and mm. who were commenting how those kids. Are. I see. I see. Yeah. So it makes so it very personal really. too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really it is. Clear I, what their passions are. Yeah. That's important for the. It's a lot of here. money, but it's well worth it. What they're going to mm -hmm. do now versus mm -hmm. the wood mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. material they have now is. Right. I think it's going to be well worth it. Uh huh. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. And I know these are all uh, publicized by being shown on Channel 18. Yeah. So Channel yeah. 18. So and we have. So uh, anybody can watch. I guess yeah, we're on every time we're on. It's on yep. channel 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in um, on the website, most importantly, there's a list of dates coming up mm. for all of these projects, um, and the, and the dates that are we have three more dates coming up, I believe, in November. Um, for uh, meetings, for is meetings that what you mean? Yes. To okay. to to have all these projects um, discussed. Right. Okay. Right, and and every, someone comes and explains what it's about and. Mm -hmm. What the application mm -hmm. really means to the community. It's a very open process. Yeah. It seems really great. It really yeah. is. And people come. Yeah. And they have yeah. a lot to say in a good way. You Excellent. Know? That's I love it. The pro and the con. Yep. You know, why okay. are we spending so much on this and not on that? And it's it's a right. it's, it's a great right. process. It's a community right. process. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well it shows a lot of engagement. Yeah. So yeah. it's great. Do you have anything else you would like to highlight uh, with regard to the work of the um, committee or yeah, no, just that um, it, it, it's, um, it's interesting. I'm on the housing committee, and I was picked with um, historic is on there, conservation, mm -hmm. housing authority. Every, mm -hmm. every different group is represented. Is represented. Yeah. And uh, that's important. So, so there's a lot of cross-fertilization. There, there's, and, and yeah, there's, uh, of all the money we're going to give out, yep. there's, there's tons of balance. Yes. You know, so mm -hmm. when you look at the money, the money already uh, 10%. Um, is broken out for housing, um, rec, mm -hmm. conservation, mm -hmm. and then undesignated, which is the biggest pot, which yeah. allows us to put money to something that has a priority, I guess. Mm -hmm. in the, in the, in or the maybe state. unexpected. Or maybe unexpected, yeah. yeah. Something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. it's, a great, it's, a great, it's a great group. Well, welcome to the committee. Yeah, I hope they come to some of the meetings. Yeah, and check out the website yeah. uh, because that's the way to find out about what's happening uh, with the commission. So this is Diana Lane for Channel 18. Thank you so much. And we thank Joe McParland. I did, wanted to get his name correct. Good for you. And Dinah for sitting down together and bringing us up to date what's going on with the Community Preservation Committee. And because uh, they do have uh, meetings that are open meetings that you can attend. And, Good point. Uh, you know, uh, if you want to be caught up, uh, you just check and see when those meetings are, and you can go. They're in the Griffin Room usually, and uh, right at, uh, at Town Hall. Well, folks, that is our show for this week. We really appreciate you joining us. On behalf of all of us here at Channel 18, uh, we say thank you. Please take advantage of everything going on around town. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye bye for bye. now.